Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. This is Eisenerz and today I want to talk about how I became a better CDH player, pilot and brewer. In the last year or so I noticed that I've gotten quite a bit better at CDH. Not that I'm incredibly good, but my win rate has gone up noticeably and I tried to assess some measures that helped me improve my game. So here are my top 5 tips to become a better player, pilot and brewer. But before we get started, please consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. It really helps the channel grow and get my videos out there to a larger audience. And now let's get started. Of course, there's some generic advice like play more games in order to get more experience or watch other people play in order to see how they pilot. But I think we can and we should be a little bit more specific here. Keep in mind though that these are only my personal tips that help me improve my game. You might totally disagree and that's alright. If so, please leave a comment down below to share your experiences with me. So my first tip is to know your deck and commit to it. And by that I mean really know your deck, know all the ins and outs, all the combo lines, all the requirements, all the gameplay cues. For example, like how to play in the early game, in the mid game, in the late game, how to react to certain pots, how to react to certain opponents, etc, etc. Let me give you an example. As you already know, my main deck is Urza, and I pretty much know everything there is to know about this deck. All the viable cards that could be played, how to adapt to a certain meta, what stacks pieces to look for in certain scenarios, when to pivot the game plan, etc. Just a ton of experience piloting this deck. But in order to get this far, I almost exclusively played Urza for over a year. Sure, that's restricting, but I now pilot this deck at a very high level. Some might even say at the skill ceiling. And my personal win rate proves, to me at least, that this kind of commitment is worth it to become a better pilot. On the other hand, I'm fairly new to Roger Tavesh or the Turbo Nos archetype in general. I'm still learning how to mull properly, how to grind value with my commanders, how to react to certain pots, when to go for a win and all the other necessary stuff in order to become a better pilot. Sometimes I even miss sequence or just overdo it in the storm turns. And that's just because of a lack of experience with the deck. Of course, I still win games, but I sure as hell don't pilot Roger Tavesh at the same level I pilot Urza. So in order to improve as a pilot, I commit to a deck and try to get as many games in as possible with a goal of getting better just a tiny little bit with every game. Be it with better mulligans, better pot assessment or better sequencing. So, in short, my advice would be to always aim for the skill ceiling of any given deck you play and you can only do that by actually committing to it and getting a lot of games in with that deck. My second tip is to have a variety of decks from different archetypes. I personally play Urza as a main deck, which is an artifact-based mid-range control list with some mana denial stacks. My second deck is Four Color Omnath, which is a creature-based evolution style list that wins with creature-based combos or the usual Underworld Breach shenanigans. And as a third deck I play Roger Tavesh Turbostorm, which is just a super fast Turbo Ad Nauseam Rakdos list. Three decks, three archetypes. And the better I get at piloting any one of them, the better I will be as a CDH player overall. Knowing how to pilot different archetypes also means that you know how to play them. You know their strategies, you know how they mull, you know how they play into different pots and everything else you need to know in order to properly assess how your opponent is going to play the game. This approach in my opinion is a good middle ground between only playing one deck all the time in order to master it and become a better pilot and playing a lot of different decks all the time in order to become a better CDH player overall. I'm personally not a fan of the constant deck hopping some people do when they play a different deck every week. I used to do that for a while and it didn't go too well. I believe that by doing that you will never play any given deck at its fullest potential or skill ceiling. It is crucial to have some variety in the decks you play in order to improve your general skills as a player and not your particular skills as a pilot of any given deck. So in short my advice would be to pick two, three or four lists that differ a lot from one another, commit to them and play them until you master them. This also means that you should play your decks in different pots regularly. If you play against the same people with the same decks every time, you are only going to get better at playing against them. If you want to improve as a pilot and as a player overall, 
It is not only important to have some variety in the decks you play, but also a lot of variety in the opponents you face. The third tip can't be implemented overnight, because you have to have a lot of metagame and deck knowledge, as well as experience. But it's also a very impactful measure to improve your game, considering pot composition and turn order. As most of you know, player 1 usually has the highest chance of winning a game, so turn order actually matters a ton. Always be aware of who plays before you and who plays after you. Is there a turbo player before or after you? Is there a blue player? Where do they sit in relation to you? Are they going to play before you or after you? Can you pressure them to use their interaction before you have to use your interaction? Is there a sex player? And if so, do they play before you or after you? This is one of the hardest things about CDH in general. And with limited information, you can only assume what is going to happen within a game and pivot your game plan into a certain direction. But an informed guess is always still better than not reacting to the pot at all. Let me give you an easy example with Urza. If I go first or second, I usually prioritize a win. I don't rush it like a Turbonaw stack would, but I prioritize combo pieces over stacks pieces, because I go first and I can therefore kind of dictate the pace of a game. If I go third or fourth, I need to catch up so instead of grabbing a combo piece, I try to grab a stacks piece or more interaction to kind of slow down the game and bring it down to my pace. I also try to emphasize card draw in order to keep up with the players going before me. Now that's just considering turn order. Additionally, you will have to consider pot composition. If I face a rule of law stack stack, I try to pivot towards beatdown and grab more removal spells. If I face turbonos, I will emphasize early interaction over removal. If I face a mix pot of turbonos and stacks, I will try to grind as much value as possible in order to outvalue my opponents while they keep each other at bay. Could this be more difficult? Yes, because in order to realize your game plan, you have to have the right cards in your hand, right? And this leads us to my next tip, mulligans. Mulligans are one of the hardest things to do properly in all of MTG. First of all, they are luck-based, but you also run the risk of having less and less cards the more aggressively you mull. This gets even harder in a competitive 4-player 100-card singleton format. Let's say you have analyzed the pot composition and the turn order and you are now sure about how you want to play this game. Well, you now need to mull for the cards that allow you to realize that game plan. Next, you have to prioritize the things you are looking for. Is a rock more important than an interaction piece? Is an interaction piece more important than card draw? Is a card draw engine more important than a stacks piece? You have to be sure about this before you start mulling. And now, finally, you can put that into practice. Usually, if the first hand isn't a solid keep, you go for a second hand of seven because it's a free mulligan. If that isn't a solid keep as well, you can easily go down to six. But what do you do if that hand of six is also pretty mediocre? So now you have to make an important decision. Do I keep a mediocre hand of 6 or do I mull even more aggressively, down to 5, and possibly risk having an even worse hand? And now let's say you, you do it and you go down to 5 or 4 or even 3. Do you now still look for the same cards you were looking for at a hand of 7 or a hand of 6? Most likely not, right? But what exactly are you now looking for with a hand of 4 or 3? A stacks piece? Card draw? A wheel maybe? The answer to that of course differs from deck to deck and pot to pot. But if you manage to become good at mulligan decisions, your game plan will obviously improve a ton. In theory it's an easy concept. You finish how you start. If you start with a crappy hand, you will have a crappy game. If you start with a good hand, you will have a good game. The hard part is actually putting it into practice. So try to keep these steps in mind the next time you play. First. What am I looking for to play in this pot? Second, what cards do I prioritize? Third, how aggressive can I be with my mulligans? And fourth, how do my priorities change if I mull very aggressively? Also, mulligans can easily be practiced. Go to Moxfield, open the simulator and do some mulligans. Of course, you still need to keep track. How aggressive did I mull? What kind of hand did I keep? when was I able to close out the game, and was that a good mulligan decision or a bad mulligan decision. My last tip is more concerned about brewing, which in my opinion is a crucial part of CDH. 
If you want to play your optimal list, you can't just net deck what someone else pooped on the interwebs. In order to brew your personal perfect deck list, you have to A. Understand your archetype, your deck and of course the goal you have with your deck. B. You have to know the general meta or at least your personal meta like your playgroup. This is really crucial to make necessary adjustments to different metas. One meta might be very fast, one meta might be grindy, one meta might have a lot of graveyard stuff and another meta might be very heavy on creatures. C. You need to accept changes and mistakes. Maybe you want to play that new card that was spoiled, but it kind of stinks. Well then you probably shouldn't play it. And maybe you want to keep that one staple card in your deck, but it proves to be kind of bad in the current meta. Well, then again, you should probably cut the card. I know the feeling of not wanting to cut a card from a deck for different reasons, but sometimes it's just a necessary step in order to progress with your list. Just swap the card, put it away for a while, and you will probably forget about it after a few wins. It really gets easier the more often you do it. Now, as I said earlier, I can only speak for myself, of course, but before I leave, I would still want to know what you do in order to become a better CDH player, pilot and brewer. Leave a comment down below so we can all bring our gameplay to the next level. And with that, I'm out. Thank you for watching my video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment down below, share it with your friends, and of course, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel. This is Eisnerz and Auf Wiedersehen.